both the Brixton blog and the Brixton Bugle are going really well at the moment. Um, we've been lucky in that we've sort of seen a, a steady increase in, in audience, both print readers and, and online. So the Brixton Bugle comes out monthly on the last Friday of the month and we print 10,000 copies. Uh, and the paper's normally around 24, 28 pages, depending on, on advertising. Uh, the Brixton blog itself was actually started by my co-editor Zoe Jewell before I came along. And it was started as more of a kind of community blog, really, where it would be updated maybe once or twice a week with stuff. Um, now it's a fully-fledged news website. Um, I first met Zoe through her blog and said that I really liked it and, there might be, and asked if there was scope to, to make it a bit bigger. Um, because I think we both realised that there was a huge shortage of news provision in the area. We're lucky now, we do actually have a big team involved in the blog and bugle. There's, there's probably about uh, eight editors of different sections. So there's a sports editor, a news editor, a council editor, who all do it in their spare time and actually commission their own stories. And then under each editor, they'll have a team of contributors, maybe eight or ten contributors under them, who regularly write stuff for that section of the website. Uh, and it means that Zoe and I can concentrate on news and maybe bigger stories without sort of spending all our time sort of compiling the listing, for example. I think it must be one of the busiest news patches in the country because you've got all sorts of amazing good news. There's all this community energy and, and action going on. So we've got our own currency with the Brixton Pound. We've got our own energy generation company, which is owned by the community called Brixton Energy all sorts of amazing stuff, Transition Town stuff. Um, but at the same time, we've also got one of the sort of more, most deprived boroughs in the country, really, and, and huge levels of deprivation, um, massive amount of poverty, uh, and, and sadly, you know, quite traditionally quite high crime levels, um, which all adds up to say that it, it's quite a busy patch. There's always something going on and something for us to do. I mean, there's never enough, enough of us to do it, unfortunately. Uh, the reason why we chose Brixton as, as the patch for the blog and the bugle is because both Zoe and I live in the centre of Brixton, love it and, and feel passionate about it. I come from a print journalism background, Zoe works in television journalism, but there's still the, the romance there for actually having newsprint in your hands. So we always had that ambition. I don't think we ever realised how popular it, it might be. So when we started selling, trying to sell ads in, on the website, we were talking to local businesses who were saying, I'd like to advertise, but I'd actually like to advertise in print. I don't trust online. You know, how many people are going to look at it? People don't care. But actually, if I could see my ad in a paper, I'd pay you for that. So we went away and looked at what the other kind of traditional local papers were charging. I thought, well, we could charge half that and got a quote for the printing. And it was much less than we thought. Um, so we thought, all right, we'll go for it and stood outside the tube station giving it out, thinking people would think it's weird, but actually people were queuing up to get it. So we knew from then, from the first day we gave out the paper, that I think we knew we were, it would be a success because there was that appetite for it. From what the feedback we get, particularly the paper is read by a wide cross section of people who live here because we get people coming up. It might be an old Caribbean lady as she's picking it up on the way, you know, on the way to the market saying she loves it and she reads it every month. It might be a young professional person, you know, it might be anyone. In the website, I would have thought, looking at our analytics, it's more kind of a young professional readership, which we kind of want to move towards being a lot more accessible. So we try and do that with our content. So we try and make our content relevant to everyone. But the nature of how we get our audience, a lot through Twitter and Facebook, I think kind of lends itself slightly to, to, to a younger audience. Social media has been really important to the story of the Brixton blog and the Bugle just from day one really. Um, Twitter was essential to our genesis in the fact that we already had a small following when I got involved, actually quite a big following, on Twitter which was a great place to start because we put our ideas out there and asked for help and then we got most of our response came through Twitter. So we got someone offered to help us with designing the website, someone offered to, us, to help us come up with a logo, people wanted to write for us and that was super important. Um, and Twitter has then developed so that now it's just as important, maybe even if not more important, uh, because we use it for sourcing news. Um, the people that contribute to us are all sorts. Most people, certainly those who are sort of take editor roles, tend to be youngish people who are quite media savvy, some work in PR, some work in journalism already. Um, 
they already have a background in kind of of doing that and, and understanding social media and, and how online content works. Um, so they'd be the people that contribute. But having said that, we also have older people who contribute for us who do, you know, all kinds of different topics as well as younger people. And we're working now more with some of the primary schools. So we're going to be having a, a primary schools page where the kids are actually generating stuff for the, for the newspaper and for the website. So, yeah, hopefully a wide cross section. Obviously, I'm a journalist and, and Zoe and I are both come from a journalism background, so we love the news side of it. But a huge amount of the Brixton blog and the paper itself is around the community news features and, and lifestyle stuff. So we do find a lot of the traffic to the site comes to those stories. Everyone loves a restaurant review. Everyone loves to read about the latest cafe or bar when it's just opened. We've had lots of stories that I'm fond of, I suppose. One that sticks in my mind would be the council that council the Lambeth Country Show which is this great fun sort of country fate basically but in the middle of Brixton in the park and it gets about a quarter of a million people over the weekend and it's sort of well known it's in its 40th year this year. Ten days after the initial our first story they announced that they were reinstating it and we're going to hold it slightly later in the year. That made us realise quite early on I think the power of citizen of community journalism in terms of holding the council to account because we feel that they might have if we hadn't picked up on it there was a possibility, you know, it would have people would have accepted it and it would have gone on. And actually now, two years later, we wouldn't have a country show anymore. So that's, yeah, I think that, that's something we're quite proud of. That, that sticks in the mind, I think, because of the timing. There's a few different types of story uh, that have a big reaction. One is, sadly, um, travel and traffic accidents get a lot of traffic, um, mostly from mobile devices. Uh, what kind of gets equally large amount of traffic and actually generates much more interest in comments is around in Brixton we're seeing we have seen over the past few years this sort of process of gentrification there's a lot of strong feeling around that so there's you know, different sides different points of views and then along with that other stories that have been quite big have been stories that have also been quite big nationally so when Nelson Mandela died for example 